Welcome everyone to the first ongoing series I'll be doing for this channel. I'm Dark and I apologize for not formally introducing myself before. I know I haven't been too personal in my last few videos, but the aim for this channel is to offer meaningful game criticism, leaving more lax talk to my uh, gaming podcast indie sense, which you can go check out the link I hopefully remember to leave in the video description. I forget sometimes. This video is to announce, explain, and begin a retrospective series on the works of one particular indie development house I've been following for a while, Wadget Eye Games. I picked them up for a first series partly because I could capture footage of their games fairly easily, but I would have looked at their whole library sooner rather than later even if I had a better recording method. Wadget Eye is one of the big names that really got me into indie gaming, alongside Christine Love, Vagabond Dog, and Evolver Digital, and they rekindled my interest in point-and-click adventure games, leading me to explore the libraries of Whitebird Productions, Microids, and Daedalic Entertainment. They're easily one of the most influential developers and producers in my own personal growth as a player of games and a proper critic, and they absolutely deserve a spotlight on here. Rather than try to do a single video and find one angle to focus on, I decided to go through their library one by one and give my thoughts as I play through all their commercial releases, both games I'll be replaying and ones I have yet to get to. I'll be skipping over any freeware, uh, freeware titles or solo projects from the various big names at the studio, aiming at just games they developed and put up for sale under their own title or helped publish or helped collaborate on such as the case with the Ch uh, Charnel House Trilogy. Expect every video to go up by release date, starting with their Jewish murder mystery game The Shiva, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and ending with one of their most uh, recent releases once I get to it. Hopefully that will be Unavowed, which is releasing later in 2018, but I have a lot of projects outside this channel, so that probably won't be the last one knowing me. The video should be a tad rougher than my uh, past three essay videos, not really aimed at a particular topic or angle, but they will be properly scripted and express my thoughts on each title in the studio's evolution. They just won't be focused on a particular aspect of the game. I figured this would also be a good point to give a brief history of the company and name off some of the major staff, since I suspect their names are going to be coming up a lot in future videos. The CCO of Wadget, David Gil Dave Gilbert, is a New Yorker who got his start early in, in the early 2000s making entries in Ben Yahtzee's Crenshaw's, yes that Yahtzee, reality on the Norm Adventure Game Project, a shared continuity project created by dozens and dozens of creators. Regular developer for the studio, Francisco Gonzalez, also contributed to the project and made his own game series, the Ben Jordan Paranormal Investigator series up until 2012, which may be something I'll look at in the future, but not for this series. After Gilbert made some waves and for a few years on the independent development scene, he eventually founded Wajid Eye Games in 2006 and released the Shiva, while Gonzalez helped with voice work for the game, eventually becoming more involved with sound work in later titles. Janet Gilbert, the CTO and Dave Gilbert's now current wife, had previous experience in mobile development and mainly worked supporting their titles to the mobile systems, but has done programming and coding for a few of their later releases as well. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly to the company's success in the formation of their own identity, is Ban Chandler, an in-house artist and graphic designer responsible for helping shape the studio's unique sprite art that have helped them stick out among the crowd. His touch on other projects outside the studio usually completely noticeable from just a quick glance. These four people, the others at the studio, the regular voice actors, and the many other collaborators they've worked with have helped make one of the strongest in these studios today, recapturing an era of 90s point and clicks long disappeared. Now, I don't mean that point and clicks died at some point, they never did, they never went away despite what you may have heard. I'm talking about a particular type of point and click that has slowly vanished throughout the ages since the 90s during the advent of uh, FMV until Wadget appeared on the scene around 2006. They rarely make pure comedies or go with thematically later narratives, but instead make simple to the point thriller narratives. 
usually in contemporary settings, usually in New York, exploring things as wild as cyberpunk to the everyday as real estate, uh, real estate schemes. They effectively brought back pulp novel stories to a medium that mostly left them behind, and I think there's a real value in this sort of character-focused entertainment. I hope you all enjoyed the series, and I'll hopefully be back sooner than later for a look at the Shiva and get this series started off proper. Until then.